everyone, this is Noemi. I hope you are going well. Today I'm going to answer your question about the Australian biodiversity. Are there snakes in Australia? Giant spider. Are there really many animals that are deadly to humans in Australia? Yes, there is a lot of snakes, spiders and other deadly animals in Australia. You will find dangerous animals either on farmland, in a bush or even like in a city. Uh, obviously, like you, the species you will find will be different depending on where you are, but yes, there is a lot of dangerous species everywhere. Snakes, let's talk about these animals. So, as you know, snakes are reptiles, so they feed on small prey like um, mammals, birds, uh, amphibians, insects, but also like um, reptiles, including snakes. So, they are likely to occur anywhere where they can find prey, but also area where they can rest, hide, uh, stay warm and uh, protect from predators. In farmland or in a bush on a cold day you will most likely find snakes under a pile of rocks, woods or any other type of material under which they can uh, hide, stay warm. Uh, but on a warm day and if you are very lucky you will be able to see snakes um, warming up on the path, uh, on a rock or in the grass. You may also be able to see some snakes in the city in Australia. Um, yeah, by creating city, humans also created like ideal habitat for other animals, uh, such as rats, mouse, possums, um, all the prey that snakes love. Um, tiger snakes, brown snakes, for them, like the city is like a, a big, big pain tree. But this should not discourage you from coming to Australia, because snakes don't care about humans. Uh, if you don't annoy them, if you don't try to touch them or coming too close, they will absolutely not try to bite you. It's not worth the energy for them because you are not a prey, you are not a predator, so they have absolutely no reason to attack you. They would much prefer to just stay still, ignore you or just going away from you. But that's it. There are a lot of spiders in Australia, this is true. Uh, including some relatively dangerous ones like the redback spider and the white tail spider. But like snakes, spiders absolutely don't care about humans. They will not bite you, they will not attack you if you leave them alone. Um, they are very, very small compared to you and they just see you as a, a big element, a big thing in their habitat. That's it. One of the biggest spiders you will likely see when traveling in Australia is the Hutzman spider. And to be really honest with you, they terrify me too. But this is very like an irrational fear. Because like other spiders, Hutzman spiders don't care about humans. Hutzman spiders are very large, long legged spiders, roughly approximately 20 cm across the legs. Um, and one of the particularities is that they are very good jumpers. So if you come too close, if you annoy them with your broom, for example, they will try to jump on you. But despite their size and their strong personality, Hutzman spiders are not dangerous to humans. And there are many other animals in Australia that are much more dangerous to humans, like the saltwater crocodiles, the bull sharks, or even like the blue ring octopus. By the way, if you want me to talk um, a bit more about any other particular species, just let me know in the comments and I will get back to you. Question two. So are the fauna and flora very different from the one in France? Um, yes, and this is not surprising for many reasons. Australia is a relatively new country um, and it's far away from everything. Approximately two thirds of the population live in uh, capital cities like Sydney, Melbourne and only one third uh, live in the rest of Australia. So that means that there are very large area of untouched or almost untouched vegetation that are home to uh, a lot of very unique species. There are more than 600,000 native species in Australia and uh, most of them cannot be found in the wild anywhere else in the world. So yes, there is like a similar habitat structure like woodland, forest, grassland but with very different species. Imagine a forest with eucalyptus trees, woodland with cockatoos, grassland with earless dragon, dunes with tea trees. This is how different Australia is from France. But if you look closer, you might recognize a few species. Red fox, uh, dandelion, common blackbird, or even our dear domestic dove. These are all introduced species to Australia. What is more endangered, the flora or the fauna? Mm, both, because one cannot go without the other one. 
if you remove habitat, then you will impact flora. And so as a result, some plants will become uh, threatened or even worse, become extinct. And because of that, some animal species will not be able to find their food or their habitats, and then they will become threatened as well, and worst case scenario, become extinct. Flora and fauna are interlinked, so they depend on each other for their survival. What are the threats of the species you study? There are many threats, and most of them are in one way or another links to humans. I would say for, for most of my projects, like the main threats are habitat removal, habitat degradation, or fragmentation. Um, habitat removal is often required to construct uh, new houses, uh, warehouses, or path, or any other type of construction. And once constructed, human activity will impact the area where vegetation remains by introducing weeds, uh, rubbish, or any other type of pollution. In such a scenario, threatened flora species with a very limited range, for example, will uh, have a lot of chance to become extinct. They just simply don't have legs to run away from danger. So if you remove the habitat, they will, be, they will need to go somewhere else and find new resources, new territory. But then the other territory might be already occupied. And then you will put pressure on um, the animal already living there and then increase the competition to the access to resource and then most likely lead to the death of some of these animals. Animals are also severely impacted by development and uh, in most cases it's just because the habitat is removed and not replaced. For example, like some uh, large bird species like the powerful owl or the gang gang cockatoo, um, they need like very large tree hollow to breed. So they need this hollow to build nest and raise their young. But it can take up to 200 years to a tree to produce such a hollows. It's very rare, like there is no many of them in nature. So imagine if you remove such a trees, where this animal will go? What would they do to survive? They may try to disperse in the landscape and find a new territory, uh, find a new hollow to breed, but this hollow might, might already be occupied by other birds or any other animals, like possum for example and then you will put pressure on this animal residing in this area, increase the competition to the access of resource, um, and then lead to the death of some animals for sure. So this is what happens for animals who are lucky enough to be highly mobile and um, yeah, able to run away from danger. But what about the animals who are very tiny and uh, are not fast or just can't move at all? For example, the striped legless lizard, that's a good example. It's like a, a very small lizard with no legs. It really looks like a, a very small snake. This animal, they will just die on sight. They have absolutely no chance. They can't run away from machines. Or in a better case, they would just become isolated from the other animals and uh, not able to find a mate uh, and breed. Just like, yeah, start a family. For example, for this species, anything like any gap bigger than a couple of meters only is for them is too scary, they will not cross it, they will not even try, and then they will become isolated. So that's enough. Just two meters of gap in vegetation is enough to wipe out an entire population of striped legless lizards. So for example, if you construct like a new path, that's enough to remove a population of striped legless lizards from the map. That's it. This is why it's very important to carefully think about designs before starting construction on the ground. Other common threats to the Australian um, flora and fauna species include uh, roadkill, uh, introduction of exotic species, pollution, and uh, of course all the natural disasters uh, amplified by the climate change, uh, such as bushfire, floods, or just extreme weather events. Question 5. How many animals or plant species are endangered in Australia? Difficult question. Um, over the last two centuries, Australia has lost more mammals than any other continent in the world. And it's not better for the plants because Australia has now more foreign plant species than um, native plant species. In fact, Australia has one of the highest rate of species decline in the world. More than 100 Australian species are listed either extinct at all or extinct in the wild um, under the Australian legislation. So that means for these species, they only occur in captivity, like zoo. But the true number of extinction is most likely much higher than that. Just because some species are just poorly studied, 
or poorly known in general. Today there are approximately 2,000 species or ecological communities um, known to be threatened or at risk of extinction in Australia. And this number is growing quickly, every day. So every single action counts to save the Australian fauna and flora. Question 6. How many koala are left in the wild in Australia? We believe that there is roughly between 50 and 80,000 uh, koala left in the wild. This number might sound like a big number, but to be really honest with you, um, koala are not far from extinction in some of the Australian states. We estimate that uh, approximately 60,000 koala were impacted by the bushfire in 2019 and 2020. So koala numbers are decreasing very quickly. So urgent actions is required to save this iconic species from extinction. Have you ever seen a koala in a bushfire? Um, not me personally, but my colleagues, yes. Have you ever saved a koala? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, by um, removing it from the road, relocating it in a safe spot, but also by counting them, um, assessing their health, and making sure that their habitat is protected. What are the koala's predators? Koala are not very lucky because they face threat from the ground and aerial predators. Their main, uh, their main predators include dingo, wild dogs, uh, wedge-tail eagle, um, big owl, and also like the goanna, the big monitor lizard. They are usually safe from dingoes and wild dogs in the trees, but on the ground they are a bit slow and so they are a bit like vulnerable to these predators. But in addition to these predators, koala also need to face other threats uh, such as roadkill, uh, shooting, deforestation and um, yeah, just bushfire as well. People shoot koala because like they don't like the noise they do, they find them too loud so they just want to get rid of them quickly. So that's what some people do. Unfortunately. Which animals and plant species do you study and protect? I study all the Australian species. So my main objective is to make sure that all indigenous species is protected. So yeah, but obviously like some species require like more urgent action than others. If they are like threatened, obviously we need to act now. Some species are more common, but this is not why this is, this is not a reason why we should not like include them in our project. Just because like all species have potential to become threatened in the future and to become extinct. So any action to protect the um, Australian fauna and flora species is very important, whatever species you are targeting. Thank you very much for your question. If you have any other questions, please like pop them in the comment section just below. 